Hey, Fidelity Fortune Hunters, it's Tom Wilmot. It's Tuesday, May 17, 2022, and the markets had quite a rebound off the low that it put in last Thursday, the 12th, when we were talking about it right here on this video channel. I thought I'd give you an update on what we see as happening next, and perhaps we'll also get have a chance to get into our options strategies. So if that's of interest, Hold on to your hat, and we'll get started right after this. Okay, friends, um, I have to admit right up front, I failed you miserably. I promised a video update over the weekend, and I didn't do it. I got busy mowing the lawn and working in the yard in a nice spring weekend. But here we are, and now it's Tuesday, May 17th, and we've had a continuation of the uptick that we experienced beginning on Thursday afternoon. What we found was that we'd settled down here in this area, very close to the 1618 Fibonacci uh, retracement level that I'll show you in just a second. And now we've continued on up into the bands and also potentially continuing on to that Wells Wilder smooth moving average. So uh, let's take a look at all of these issues. And let's begin also, in case you just stumbled into these videos by accident for the first time today, let's take a look at our template, which we call the rejection template on Fidelity ATP, Active Trader Pro. Okay, first of all, here we have a purple line, and I'd like to take a look at it up here. The EMA and then the Wells Wilder is down in this corner. In order to change any of these indicators, you simply go to the down arrow, modify, and now we can change that. And let's make it an orange so that you can see the difference, obviously line thickness and style are possible. This was a 24 period moving average based on the closing price of each candle. Let's apply that and there we go. I have the MACD in here uh, a la Fidelity's indicator columns but I'm going to get rid of it now to save some real estate space. You can see it works quite well when you're in an uptrend, it has that cross over here. We move the, the histogram bars into the positive territory and so forth. But let's uh, try to keep this simple today. And so what we're going to do, again, is to delete. And so by doing these things, you can also see that what we're, what we're trying to do is to help you understand how to use the indicators and how to modify them once they're in place. Obviously, the indicator areas right here. When you pull this down or click on it, you start with an alphabetic order and you get all the way over into this area by hitting these arrows. And you can see here was our new Wells Wilder moving average that we've added to our template and so on and so forth. So that's the situation that we're in right now. Okay, now notice that we have also not added that indicator that showed up temporarily on the screen, we have to apply it to the screen in order to get it. Down here, once again, is the history viewer. And you can see now that we had a downturn back in January. We tried and struggled higher. We moved back in March, struggling higher. And we got just a little bit above the peak we reached in February. And then we began to fall off again as the Fed introduced its interest rate increase policies. Now, the situation with this history viewer is that we can either move backwards in time by moving the entire bar backwards, or we can move forwards in time, or we can add or subtract candles or price bars from the current view. And if we'd like to squeeze it down and see more, that's what I just did for you. Once again, we can even go a little further. And now we have what we were looking at last Thursday, which was this move up into the high of March, a crossover of our moving average bands above that Wells Wilder moving average 24. And these, uh, just as quick review, are the 12, 16, 
20 and 24 EMAs. And you can see here that this was the area where we had our magnificent crossover that led to that nice pop back around the third beginning around the 13th of March 2022. Now what happened then as we talked about last Thursday was we had a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, and a continuation to the downside. This was the only place where we almost took out the previous high, but you can see here as we got into our second uh, set of bullets for last Thursday, we talked about the fact that we have these rejections. We can see here that now that we've had a twist to the downside in our multiple moving averages, we had this push higher by the by the bulls, but it failed, came down, closed below the 12, and then we were off to the races to the downside. Great place for an options trade here, maybe a weekly, and uh, I would say that's probably the time length that you're looking at out too far. You you would have to predict you were going to continue here. You don't need to do that. You don't need to take that in this particular time frame, which as you can see here is a 195 minute chart. Notice also that we have the RSI listed here, and that's one of my favorites. We come back, we bounce, and you can see at this point we failed. We pulled back into the bands, and then we failed again below the 4555 band. Up here, saw our spectacular failure to the downside. This was another one here, a big move upwards, and that was on uh, the uh, 4th of May. Let's see what, our, what that was on a calendar setting. A 4th of May was a Wednesday, and that's probably around the time of the Fed speak and the uh, open market committee meetings. The next morning, we were off to the races again with a huge rejection to the downside. These 195-minute marks include one indicator per, uh, per half session, so this is a morning session, uh, holding steady at least through the afternoon close and then continuing to the downside. Now, what we did last week was to draw our Fibonacci retracements. So let's start with that again here to see where we are today. We move higher. We move into this area here. We can take our bands, and you can see here that by turning our arrow into a double-edged arrow, we can drop this down a bit. We can come down here, see it, click on there. And then after you roll your uh, cursor over it and click and hold, you can begin to drag it in further. Let's move this over as well. There's a line on three sides here where you can play with your uh, amount of uh, candles you have displayed on your screen. And now let's take a look here at our uh, Fibonacci retracements. We'll click here. And then we want to change this to our yellow simply because it's easier to see, especially in the in the uh, uh, video that we're uh, forming for you now. Snap to price. Let's get rid of the 23.6. Remove selected. And now let's add a value. And we put in the 1618 last week on Thursday. Now what we'd like to do is make sure that our targets are in place here so we're going to move this up a little bit just to make sure that we have an exact calculation hang on one second let's see what we got here there we go now we put ourselves in place and now let's see maybe i didn't apply that i apologize add a value 1618 i'm always forgetting to add the value so don't you do that here it is, add the value, and then apply. And notice what we found last Thursday is that we came down, we almost touched the 1618 extension on the bottom side. Then we had this area here where we consolidated through the afternoon session, and we ended up with a nice uh, hammer candle at the bottom of the trend. We went below this level. We closed above the opening of this candle. A very nice sign. And so what we were doing down in this area was taking a look at some uh, selling, some uh, put options, the put option spread, as it were, in this area, hoping that we would have a Friday close above this level and we'd be able to capture the credit that we'd received by, uh, by selling 
this put credit spread. And in fact, that's what happened. Now, on Friday afternoon late, we had this one hammer candle, but basically we were unable to take this out on Monday morning. We went up a little higher into the bands, and then we fell back again, but still higher. And now today, we've had an additional kind of a rally in both the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, it, not just the but all three of the of these, including the SPX, which we're looking at right now here, as you can see in our pull down. Now the situation is the last time this happened, we rallied almost up to the Wells Wilder, and then we failed. So the question now is, because this is the continuation of this downtrend, have we had our low for this particular situation? Notice that we have a pullback right to the potentially a pullback right to the low of this area which ended up being absolutely in confluence with the wells wilder move here so the question now becomes are we going to go up and fail again with a rejection you'll be watching for that and you can even watch for it on a lower time frame as you may notice up here i have 39 minute charts 78 minute charts you can drop down to see what the price section is intraday if you're interested in doing that okay so i would suggest to you that this failure to move down this failure to roll over right here indicates that we may have some buying interest all the way back up to this 100 percent line which set the stage for this move higher the question will be if we can continue here to move higher and basically what you'd like to be looking at is this situation here where we had a crossover of our moving averages which we haven't had yet and then a continuation past the wells wilder here that might bode well for a move back up into this band the 61 8 up here our mid-range bands and so forth a failure in this area down here on the other hand let me see if I can move this over for you here. Hang on one sec. Oh, come on, people. Let's go. Okay, here we are. Uh, a failure here might indicate a move even lower. And that's what we talked about last Thursday was the opportunity, potentially, to have a move that is not just one point. Uh, 161.8 but the 200 mark down here which would be equivalent to the move higher let's see how that works and let's uh, uh, chart it again hang on if we put in our 200 moving average here our 200 uh, target on the Fibonacci retracement we add that value and apply it you can see that that takes us all the way down to the th uh, 3686 level which is a significant drop further. Now we have some bears lurking on the street these days, so I wouldn't be surprised with a move in either direction. In particular, I wouldn't be surprised with a near-term move back up to the Wells Wilder indicator. Okay, that's enough for this video. I'll come back to you and talk more about the put credit spreads that you might put in, say, at this particular place here, or as you might want to consider additional option strategies as this market continues its move potentially to the downside. Thanks for watching.